This is a review of episodes 51 through 58 of Hajime no Ippo. This video will have spoilers for through episode 58 of this show, so if you've not seen up to 58, then do not watch this video because you will be spoiled. Up until this point, most of the events that have occurred in this show have occurred as events, as moments when you can see the beginning and the end. Ippo usually trains, then fights, then rests, then trains, then fights, then rests again, and it's been sort of just going on like that for the series. This time around, so much time was dedicated to Date Eiji that it almost felt like the show had shifted, so it was more about him. Ippo suffered his first loss, which I think is very healthy for him as a boxer and also as a character. Now, because Ippo doesn't have his next match scheduled, we get to see how he loses and how he interacts with people when he does. Because of the singular Date focus in this chunk of episodes, I want to take a step back and look at Ippo's various relationships throughout the show. The show actually has a surprisingly small amount of recurring characters, so instead of looking at the events that occurred in it, I'm going to look at each one and how they interact with Ippo. Ippo was, of course, the first character introduced in the series, and we came to know him very quickly as someone who was a frequent target of bullies. Perhaps the most dramatic and transformative relationship that Ippo has had throughout the series has been with the former bully, Umezawa. It started out as somewhat of a vague shared interest and blossomed into this shared passion where Umezawa is choosing to help elevate Ippo so that he can continue fighting. He can't help him train or offer him strategies, but he serves as kind of a burden relief so that Ippo can train without having to worry about his mother or the family business. He began as perhaps the antagonist of the show, the one that Ippo had to face in order to solve his problems. But now he's transformed into one of Ippo's biggest supporters, even inviting all of the classmates to come and watch him fight. Ippo was bound to struggle with the feelings of accepting his very first loss, and we can kind of see that reflected in Umezawa as well. Even if Umezawa is never capable of mustering up enough courage to verbally apologize for bullying Ippo while in high school, I think his actions kind of say it all. He's shown his feelings by never giving up something even when it was very hard for him, and Ippo's not someone who would hold a grudge and expect a verbal apology. So, I mean, as far as I can, I'm concerned, they're on the same page. His transformation was the backbone of this relationship's transformation because Ippo didn't really change. Another very important person to Ippo is Takamura, who is kind of the catalyst for the entire show since he introduced Ippo to boxing. Takamura is an undefeated boxer, so it is difficult for him to sympathize with people who are experiencing loss. Because of this, he ends up coming across as kind of a dick, simply because he thinks that's how you ought to go about things. But no matter how tough Takamura acts, he really thrives on his friends cheering for him when he's struggling in a match. He's truly invested in Ippo's career and his story, as are Aoki and Kimura, and they always go out of their way to help him train and give him strategies, even if they give him crap along the way. He explained to Ippo that a champion has special powers, so when he was not at his best during a fight, his fist was still able to carry more weight. Takamura longs to be a role model for these guys and really puts his heart into every fight so they can see him and be inspired. It's a glorious cycle, so there's never anyone out there fighting for no reason. There was that theme presented where your fists have to be attached to something so that your punches will have more weight. And that thing they're attached to has to be people who are relying on you, your obligations. When there's something worth fighting for, it's much easier to stand up despite the odds or the pain. Takamura's fists are attached to people who look up to him, and in return, he's attached to their fists. They give each other a hard time when they're not in the ring, but when they are in the ring, they're always serious. In this chunk of episodes, Coach had to make a decision to throw in the towel for Ippo because he wasn't capable of understanding where his limit was. For Coach, it was not love at first sight when he first saw Ippo. He kind of made Ippo prove himself. But the good thing about Coach is that once you're in, you're in, and he'll go 100% to match your enthusiasm. 
Once Ippo showed off how awesome he was and how hard he was going to work, Coach was right there with him. This is why it was so important for him to throw in the towel and protect Ippo from himself, because sometimes he's a little too hardcore and he won't give up. That's a good quality to have, but once it gets a little too dangerous, it's important to have that level head there to step in and take care of things. He gradually worked himself into almost a fatherly role to give Ippo the tools he needs to get better on his own, but most boxers seem to have a very close relationship with their seconds, their coaches, as we saw with Vorg and his coach, and also with Date and his coach. These coaches almost feel the disappointing losses and experience the comebacks together. Ippo and Date have an evolving relationship as well, which went from kind of a, oh, look at him type of relationship and turned into, oh shit, he could actually beat me type of relationship. I don't think Date ever did Ippo a disservice by underestimating him because he was right there with him every step of the way and saw his sharp learning curve. We learned a lot about Date and his earlier career and his devastating loss in Mexico. He said that the reason why he gave up was because he wanted to be close by to his family, but I think he was using that as more of an excuse because his spirit was actually broken from losing like that. His fight with Ippo actually woke him up from this trance, which had been labeled as his style, to be always kind of mature and calm throughout the entire fight. Yet the longer he fought against Ippo, the fiercer he became. He started taunting, and he started becoming angry, and calling Ippo names. <laughs> At first, I interpreted this as something bad that was happening to Date, because I had only ever known his boxing style as very analytical and cool and collected. But seeing this deviation from the image that he had created for himself was actually very exciting for the coach, because apparently Date used to be like that before he lost in Mexico. He sort of woke up and returned to the spunk and spring of a younger boxer while still having the wisdom of a more experienced boxer. He was actually able to acknowledge this and reflect on how Ippo was able to bring this out of him. And Ippo only had reverence and respect for Date, and his one regret was the fact that he would never be able to have the rematch for the belt again. Because Date gave up the belt and moved international, he'll always be that one fighter that Ippo will not be able to defeat in order to accomplish this one goal. Maybe that's actually what is the most upsetting thing for Ippo right now, is that he has a goal now which cannot be obtained. In this sense, Date will always seem like a force that Ippo cannot conquer, and I worry that that might freak him out a little bit. Ippo's relationship with the boxing community in general has always been very positive because he's very charming and very polite. Fans not only enjoy supporting him because he makes miraculous comebacks and is a great fighter, but also because he's just got a really great personality and you want to be friends with him. He also manages to garnish respect from opponents he's faced in the past as well. Vorg and Sendo came to watch his fight and will now face off against each other for the belt, I guess. Even though Ippo has defeated them both, they will be ranked higher than him. I don't really understand how boxing ranking works, but I guess that's how it's gonna work. Ippo does a good job by always being friendly and polite to people, so even when he defeats them, they like him, or at least they respect him. And I wouldn't even say that Mashiba dislikes him, he just uses him as a motivator to keep moving forward. Kind of like how Ippo was working towards the Date goal, Mashiba was working towards becoming stronger than Ippo. But all he had to do was move up a weight class and now he's champ! He was kind of transformed into comic relief as he returned to the show because Kumi is now attempting to initiate a relationship with Ippo. That's obviously a really cute thing blooming between these two which has taken two years to mature. But two years ago it wasn't the right time. Now it is. Now Ippo will always have that rivalry with Miata that was established way back at the very beginning. Maybe Miata belongs in a different weight class, but he is dedicated to this rivalry and having that rematch. It's friendly though, where they do want the other one to succeed. Miata saw Ippo lose to Date, and even though he didn't speak the words to his face, he still inwardly encouraged him to get better and make a comeback. They're just two fighters who haven't gotten a chance to officially fight against each other yet, even though they will really want to. At this point, we don't really know all that much about what Miyata's been up to since he came back to Japan, or even what his ranking is, because we've been so focused on Date. But maybe now, since the title is going to either Sendo or Vorg, um, 
we can have a reconnection between Miata and Ebo. Circumstances just keep them away from each other and they just need to get together and fight. But I guess at this point I'm going to stop the review and look at where we're going to go from here. Usually my cliffhanger is sending me into the conclusion of a fight, but this time around I don't have that. We're not in the middle of a fight right now. So maybe the next two episodes will just be Sendo and Vorg fighting. There's not a lot of time left of this series, but the pacing is fast enough that we could have as many as four matches in these remaining episodes. So I guess I'll see you all for episodes 59 and 60. Bye!